All right. Hey, everybody. So we're going to be looking at the string class again that I started in my phone. Um, and now we're looking to make um, actual unit tests and, and try to bring it into the real world, so to speak. Um, and we've been doing good so far. I mean, we've got 10 tests with 10 assertions. The code is very um, clean, at least from my perspective, and easy to read especially after the refactoring that we did in the previous video. So uh, we stopped at insert and basically what insert is going to do is um, if you have a string say of five characters then we want to be able to insert new characters say at the second position without deleting any of the new ones. So it would be kind of like um, so let's go ahead and just write out the test real quick. Um, <clears throat> test can insert. Um, so basically, let's say we were to write hello, um, and we wanted to write. Um, or let's say we accidentally wrote hello world, all right? Um, but we forgot the comma, and we basically want to insert a comma at that position, all right? So, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. So, let's say expected is hello, comma, world. We're going to um, create string from string and we're gonna say hello world <clears throat> right and so this if I say this assert equals just to give us a second assertion um, to make sure that we are getting what we expect um, string string all of our tests right now should pass okay. so now what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to say string insert comma space at position one two three four five six um, let's just make that comma. Um, so, and some of you might be freaking out a little bit because arrays are indexed uh, to start at zero and I'm starting at one. Um, that's just to make it easier to count, right? I don't have to say zero, one, two, three. I don't have to think of this as being an array um, because it's not the way my brain naturally tries to think of it. It just thinks of it as one, two, three, four, five. So now, if we do that, we should be able to say this assert equals expected string string. And that should fail, mainly because we don't have insert. Um, so let's go ahead and public function insert string value um, and they use in Swift they use at so I'm going to go ahead and use at as well and this is going to return the instance not a string so return this and right so we don't have the comma okay so in theory, PHP has something that makes this easy, right? So we should be able to say this string equals um, substring replace. So the standard library <clears throat> standard library has something called substring replace, and it allows us to replace a string with a string. 
So we're replacing this string with value. Um, and we're going to start at, and this optional length parameter is the, is the key. And basically what that length parameter says is how many characters do you want to overwrite um, when you do this. And in our case, we're going to say zero. Um, and so that's what causes it to be um, sort of injected in the middle here and just shoving everything else off to the left. So uh, that did not work. So why did that not work? Most likely it's because of the whole MB thing, multi-byte strings. And unfortunately there's no MB substring replace in the standard library. Um, and if we want to try to test to make sure that that's actually what happened, no, let's not go down that path. So, and so if you look for, because inside the docs, there's um, uh, PHP docs, there's usually comments and things of people saying, you know, there's a, there's something missing from the, the standard library. And so, um, you know, we're going to do this. And if you look at what this has, you know, it's, it's a fair amount of, of code. And on top of that, it's um, not consistent, right? Like there's not, um, I couldn't find anywhere where it was like, this is the definitive answer. This, this is the way that we should be doing it and they should just make it part of the standard library. So, um, so what do we do and to, to make this work? I mean, you, you can do, and, and there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, but one way is to look at the string as being an array of characters. And the multi-byte characters, the reason they're a problem is because normal um, string replacement counts them differently, right? Because there's, they're made up of multiple characters. Um, so, but what we're trying to do essentially is we're trying to have an array so we haven't um, indexed a set of characters and then split it at a certain point and then insert different things inside of that. So, um, one of the things that I did on the phone was... One, I didn't use multi-byte characters. Um, as I use this um, piece of code, and I can't remember where exactly I found it, but the idea is pretty simple. So I'm gonna bring it up here from file and to array. I'm gonna make it private, so I'm not even gonna test this directly. Um, so preg split basically says, okay, possible Unicode characters just split there. We're going to do um, this string null. Um, I can't remember what the null does. And then preg split no empty. All right. So basically in order to test this, what we can do is instead of saying count MB string length and, and having, you know, PHP handle the, uh, uh, multi-byte problem for us is we can actually say count this to array and in theory we should still only have one failure right um, because count works against an array it works kind of against a string but it really it, that's what it's made to do is work with an array so now um, what we want to do is php split array into chunks. No.
So basically you say, you have this array, the size of each chunk, that's not, that's not what I want to do. Split array at index. Slice, yeah. So array slice, pass it the array, what's the offset? Um, any type of length that you might want to have. Um, and then the sequence will have up to that many elements in it. Um, so you can sort of slice it and chunk it. Um, if the array is shorter than the length, then only the available array elements will be present, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so at any given time, I only want to slice this thing um, to at the point. Right. So, returns the slice of the offset. Right. So, if we look here, um, array slice input two. What it's going to do is it's going to start at um, zero, one, two, and it's only going to and it's going to give us these three remaining. Right. Um, if you do a negative. It's going to go um, backwards, so this would be um, one, and this would be two, and then um, you're saying I only want you to give me one, so it's only going to give you D, um, and then array slice um, starting at the zero point and going for three, that's going to give us this. So first thing we want to do is we want to create a um, a bisect of this thing. So this two oops array left is going to be array slice array and we're going to start at zero right um, but we're also going to pass in at, so left should be however many characters, um, from zero to however many characters, um, and then right should be array slice array offset at, and then take it all the way to the end. Then, what we want to do is we want to append whatever that value is in between here. So lots of ways we could do that, right? We could use our append method, we could do all sorts of things. Um, what I'm going to uh, suggest is basically go insertion string from string value, and now I do need to make it public because I, I want to be able to um, access that. So let's go ahead and make it public. And then we're going to say um, this string equals mer array merged. Um, and so what array merge does is it takes n number of arrays and glues them all together, right? Um, and they are in sequential order. So what you put first will be ahead of what you put second, ahead of what you put third. So if we say left insertion and right, that should be close, if nothing else. <laughs> um, so... Let's see, return value of a fold string must be of type, oh, array returned. Um, so, array merge, oh, right. So, we're going to do um, merged. So, this glues all the characters together. And then we're going to implode. 
Um, so what implode does is it takes the contents of an array, um, specifically uh, if they're a string, um, and binds them all together with whatever the glue is. And so in this case, um, the glue is going to be an empty space. And then we're going to say that the pieces are merged. Um, and if we put a comma, it would be different and that sort of a thing. So getting closer, but that's the same error that we had before. Off by one error. Yeah. So Huh. This makes me want to double check something. Public function tests can insert multi byte characters. So what we're going to do is we're going to Expected is that the commas are all there. So we're going to start with that, which means we want to double check that that is correct, incorrect. One, two, three. Okay, yeah, now we have the problem. Okay, so this string, we're gonna merge all of that. Well, at least nobody can accuse me of over editing um, or over preparing. Uh, merged this string equals uh, implode merged okay that's too far over so five and does that make sense one two three four five So it's kind of more of an insert after. Um, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I had to be able to demonstrate that multi bytes didn't work. Um, and so, you know, that gives us the ability to insert. And we have another one of those contents um, variations. So let's go ahead and do that. Public function test can insert from the file. Um, copy. One of these videos will probably be completely dedicated to me refactoring these tests. Um, all right, so if that's what we have, 
what we want to do is insert yeah all right so results equals string from string grab two of these right and then do insert from file and we're going to say there and it's going to be one two three four five six seven eight nine nine string this cert equals expected result no such thing as insert from file so oops insert from file um, string path int at string is going to be returned. So return an instance of that. So that should work, but it should fail. Right. All right. So how are we going to do this? So we have append from a file. We have a way to create a string from a file. So let's do that. We're going to say insertion equals string from file path. And we're just going to get the string from that. And then we should be able to do this insert insertion at Okay, um, and if I really want to be, you know, anal about it, I could probably write a different test that makes sure that there's no way that it could be easily done. Um, in fact, let's do that. So expected a z, and we're going to start with. AZ, and we're going to modify this to be at position one. Okay, so inserting works, um, and now we're getting into replacement. So I'm really trying to uh, watch my time on these. So hopefully you can sort of see the the progression of logic that sort of gets you a test, right, that you know is going to break something, and a test that you expect is going to break something, but it works anyway, for whatever reason. Um, but you get to a test that you're, it just doesn't work the way you expect, and you can't do it from the standard library. And so how do you end up making that work anyway? Um, and, you know, just sort of logic and being logical and, and reasoning about what's actually trying to be accomplished um, and how you can do it with things from the standard library. So you're not, like, I didn't have to recreate array merge. I didn't have to recreate implode or ray slice or any of that other stuff. Um, what I had to do was create this way to insert something inside of something else, um, specifically a string. And so we're probably going to mess with this later, but um, yeah. So uh, as always, thank you for making the time, and I hope you're finding these useful. Um, and I still haven't decided if I'm actually going to use this class anywhere, but um, it's at least been helpful for me. So uh, yeah.